Okay. So thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm not a godfather, so don't be afraid. <laughs> I'm not going to hunt down any one of you. you know, in case you fall asleep or anything like that, it's uh, understandable. I'm barely awake myself because you know, it's kind of early for me. I'm just coming back from my vacation. Um, I spent the past three weeks cleaning uh, my home, uh, doing some spring cleaning at home. So uh, normally I do not wake up uh, 6, 7.30 in the morning. I uh, wake up like, like 9 something, more like. Um, <clears throat> so if I do sound kind of uh, softer over time and uh, I, I sound like I might be dozing off myself, uh, please give a shout and wake me up. Okay. So um, what I want to talk about today is uh, genetic algorithms. Uh, with Go. So a little bit about myself. Um, I work with SP Group today in a team called SP Digital. So that's the first icon, the first logo. Previously, I was in uh, PayPal, HP, and, and Yahoo, and, and a number of other uh, companies. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, this is my, my handle. In fact, I'm uh, known as Sao Xiong everywhere else. So if you do a search for Sao Xiong, you can find me anywhere. Right? Um, 24 years in the tech industry, I just switched this. Uh, after the 1st of January, because like, uh, it's been a long time. Um, managing software product organizations for <clears throat> 20 years, and I've been speaking and uh, organizing tech conferences as well. Um, GopherCon Singapore is my conference, so um, please uh, do register for the CFP. <laughs> we are open today. Um, I also wrote some books. Right? Um, so the, uh, the languages that I uh, use most today is take a guess. <laughs> okay, just just wake you up. Right. Um, previously, I spent like ten years in uh, uh, twelve years in Ruby, and about eleven years in Java. So I've been doing maybe I don't know how many years that is now, but a number of years in Go. Right. So uh, I've been doing a lot of Go. So what I'm going to talk about today is um, on genetic algorithms. So what are they? Um, general algorithms are basically software algorithms, right? Um, they are not actual genetic algorithms, uh, but they are software algorithms that are based on the process of natural selection. If you go back a little bit on uh, biology 101, um, what is natural selection? It's a natural process that causes populations of organisms, so it could be animals, it could be um, plants and, and so on, to adapt to the environment over time, and then uh, they, they change, right? So this is famously um, uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, brought about by Charles Darwin. But Charles Darwin wasn't the first person to talk about natural selection. In fact, there were a number of people who talked about natural selection before that. But regardless of whether we believe natural selection, and believe me or not, there are actually people who emailed me and messaged me after that saying that uh, natural selection is not true, and they don't believe in it afterwards. So I say, look, I'm a software guy, right? Uh, theology, let's leave it as a door. Let's, let's assume that natural selection uh, is an algorithm, and uh, I'm going to write software around it. Right? So what is natural selection, like, exactly? Um, to give you an example, before the uh, 1980s, 1800s, um, there's this moth in England called the peppered moth, and they were mostly white color, um, and because this helps them to hide from predatory birds. Okay, it it uh, merges well with the light color lichens and, and uh, the trees. So if you see here, um, I circle this red to show you there's actually a white colored moth. But there are actually two moths here. I mean, I'm not sure how, how good this is. So there's a black colored moth here. So obviously this is what a bird will see. And there's a white colored moth which normally would escape right? uh, certain death. But during the Industrial Revolution, the lichens died, um, and many trees were blackened by soot. So this gives the uh, dark-colored moths a, an advantage. So we see here now, if you're white-colored previously, then you are very, very obviously a target. Um, and by the end of the century, the pepper moths were of the dark variety. Right? So this is a very famous example that uh, a lot of scientists brought up to say, hey, you know, this is uh, natural selection at work. So, so that's natural selection. Um, I'm going to talk about some jargon um, later, so to, as to understand, we all understand what it is. Let me just run, it, run through you guys. Um, organism, so this is the, the thing that we're studying. 
this is the, the object or the, uh, the subject that is struggling for survival. Uh, DNA is the, um, uh, the, the object that carries the genetic, uh, the genetic information for the organism. Um, a population is a group of organisms, and this population will have different genes uh, for their DNA. And the fitness is a measurement of how well adapted an organism is to its environment. Remember, we are trying to measure how well an organism fits the uh, environment. So the fitness is basically a measurement, it's a metric. Okay. Um, we go through a process of selection. This is natural selection. Uh, in this case, you know, gen genetic uh, uh, selection, uh, or artificial selection. Organisms with the best fitness will have a higher chance to reproduce. A reproduction here is nothing kinky about it. Okay, it's basically generating from one uh, previous uh, generation to the next generation. Inheritance. Um, the next generation will inherit attributes from the previous um, generation, and this is through genes. And finally, mutation. So we, with each generation, there is a small chance that the values of the genes will change. Right? So um, it's a probability. So it's not that uh, uh, every generation the uh, genes will change or uh, will mutate, but uh, there's a chance. Okay. So that's all you need to know. Let me get into the actual algorithm itself. It's actually a pretty simple algorithm, right? And it follows very closely to natural selection. So the first thing we do is we define an organism. Then we create the population of organisms, okay? We find the fitness of the existing organisms. This is our baseline. We select the organisms with the best fitness. So we take a whole, we look through all the organisms. We look at the organisms with the best fitness and we group those and we let them reproduce to the next generation. Okay? Uh, the next generation, when it reproduces, it will have the properties of the previous generation, but not exactly. And you will see uh, what I mean later on. And then finally, we will randomly mutate some of the uh, organisms in the next generation. Okay? And then this cycle goes back, round and round and round, until the goal is achieved. All right? So, we're going to tackle two problems today. The first problem is uh, the infinite monkey problem. So this is, um, uh, I mean, I think a number of you might already know this. Basically, what we're saying here is an infinite number of monkeys sitting on an infinite number of typewriters. They randomly just hit the keys. Given enough time, we'll eventually reproduce the complete works of Shakespeare, right? How many of you think this is true? <laughs> okay, wow. Okay, uh, all right. Um, so, I, I'm quite speechless about that, seriously, so. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so let's, instead of taking the whole works of Shakespeare, let's just take one very short sentence, right? To be or not to be. Anyone knows where this comes from? Hamlet and Tracy. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> I just know it's from Hamlet, you know. Um, anyway, to be or not to be. Okay, so what's the probability of randomly typing exactly the same sequence out? What do you think? Any, any guesses here? 10 times, 100 times? It's probability. So we have 18 characters, so what's the probability? Sorry, I have to make you do this. You know. So if we assume letters of the alphabet, 26, right? And we don't care whether it's uppercase or lowercase, right? So it's 1 over 26 times 1 over. I mean, this is basic probability, right? I assume most of you know what it is. Uh, 1 over 26 to the power of 18, right? 18 characters. So this is one chance out of 29 billion trillion, right? So to those who put your, up your hands earlier on, you know, are you sort of regretting it? <laughs> no? <laughs> Okay, the monkey types a letter every second, uh, saying that there's one chance in uh, 934 trillion years that you will get this correct. Okay? So this is the problem we want to solve, right? We don't want to sit 934 trillion years here to just wait for the monkeys to type it out. So we, what we're going to do is we want to use genetic algorithms. Okay? So let's go to the algorithm. Let's go through it slowly. Um, first, and obviously I'm, I'm going to use Go, so uh, how many of you know Go, by the way? 
Wow. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You guys better come to the GopherConf. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, even if you don't know Go, this is simple enough to, to understand, right? i uh, show you the, the beauty and the simplicity of Go. Um, we create a uh, byte array to represent the DNA, um, and we create a, a structure, a struct, okay, of a uh, uh, organism. Just have two things, the DNA, which is a byte array, and a fitness, which is a, a number, okay? It's a float. So we create initial population for organisms. Right? This is it's pretty simple. We are just randomly creating the uh, uh, the byte array, okay? And then uh, we just create a population. We gen randomly create a, a byte array, uh, assign it to the organism, and then we create a population of that. Pretty simple. Oh, and of course the uh, the fitness itself is is being calculated um, based on that. So how do you find a fitness? Um, Basically, the fitness is how close it matches the phrase to be or not to be, okay, byte by byte. So we have a, uh, a number, and this score is zero, means it's totally different, okay, and one means it's a total match. So what we want to do is we want to, to uh, actually achieve uh, one, okay. So next up in the uh, algorithm, we select the organisms with the best fitness and give them a higher chance to reproduce. So what we do is we create what is called breeding pool and place a number of copies of the same organism uh, into the fitness, uh, according to its fitness into the pool. Then um, the idea is that the higher the fitness of the organisms, the more copies it will end up in the pool, right? Just to give it higher probability that uh, it will, it will uh, uh, generate the next generation. And this ensures that the, the fittest organisms have the best chance. Uh, so this is the, the code for creating the breeding pool. I just explain it, so I don't think you need to, to be bothered too much about the code if you don't understand Go. Um, and then from there, we randomly pick two parents from the breeding pool. Okay, we pick two parents, and then we do what is called a crossover. Right? Um, basically, doing a crossover is trying to, to match make these two organisms to produce the next generation. Okay. Um, the next generation must inherit the values of the, the genes. So we must take certain properties from, from one organism and other, prop, uh, other properties from the organism and then combine them and produce the next generation. Okay, so this is how, how we do it. We randomly select two parents from the breeding pool. Let's say the, the one on orange and the one on the blue. And uh, we randomly, again, randomly select a midpoint in the DNA. Okay, we just say, okay, that's, that's the midpoint. We take some from the left, some from the right, and combine these two DNA fragments to form the child, the next generation. Okay? And we do that over and over again until we have a next generation. Okay. So once we have the next generation, we randomly mutate uh, certain organisms. Okay? So why do we mutate? If we don't mutate, what happens is if the original population uh, doesn't have the letters that we want. Let's say the original, the pool, doesn't have an O, for example. Which, this means he will never achieve it, right? Because obviously, if there's no, D, if there's no letter O in the, the DNA, then means basically we'll never, never achieve this. What we want to do is mutate, give a certain chance that uh, O might appear. Right. So if it doesn't appear at all, it might take a longer time, but um, it might take a longer time, but eventually it will because the, the, the mutation will cause uh, O to appear after a while. Okay, no, I said T here. I best need to not look at my own slides. Okay, so let's run our genetic algorithm. So we just, we just run it and uh, let's do a demo. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, get bigger. This is good, you guys can see this. A little bigger. Okay. Okay. 
So let me just show you um, code. Where did we go? Okay, I shouldn't do that. Okay, the gain is a bit small. So this is the code. Okay. It's about 150-ish lines of code. Um, let me just run it. Okay. Just to show. Normally, I would compile it, but I just want to show you that there are nothing hidden within my sleeves. I just run it. Okay. <coughs> Don't know why it happens this way. Uh, I think it's because... Okay, so let me try this again. It's not supposed to do it now. It's supposed to do it this way. Okay. So you see the generation here is the number of generations that it cycles through. Um, and finally, this is what you want to achieve, right? Fitness is one. Okay, let me run through this again. Okay, you see here, um, this part here, right? Basically, it's trying to figure out whether it's correct or not. And after a number of generations, it should achieve fitness of one. Okay? So, I mean, of course, the time taken, it depends, right? It's a probability. Uh, 12 seconds compared to 934 trillion years. So I guess it works, right? So that's, that's one. Let me... Go back to this guy. Uh, I've actually run it before that um, it came up to like half a second, right? So this is probability. Yeah. Um, so what we want to do next, what I want to show you next is how we evolve the picture of Mona Lisa. Okay. Um, but before we start, let me just run this first because. Uh, So let me just show you again, there's just one go, um, go run. Ah, fingers not working this morning. Okay, just show you this. Who's this old gentleman here? No. Yes, not. Uh, Caprio. Yeah, Caprio. Yeah. Just kidding, just kidding. Right, uh, just wake everybody up. Yeah, still early in the morning. So, how difficult do you think this is compared to what I did just now? What's the uh, multiple of complexity? 10 times harder? 100 times harder? Okay, so pretty simple. Um, so, let's look here, right? I actually purposely did a small picture of uh, Mona Lisa, right? So it's a 100 by 67, okay? So 67 across 100 uh, uh, height. Uh, so 6,700 pixels. And one pixel is four bytes. So you have uh, 6,700 pixels, that's 26,800 bytes, okay? We had 18 bytes previously, so now it's 26,800 bytes. So that's about 1,500 times more difficult, okay? So let's, let's do the same thing, right? Not very different. Um, but instead of, um, so let's do the same thing. Uh, first, we start by creating a, an organism. But instead of having just a byte array, uh, what we do is we create something called DNA, okay? Which is, I um, mean, we create a DNA that's made of something called uh, RGBA, right? This is from the standard library from Go, okay? Um, so the same thing, fitness, again, is a how well the uh, DNA matches to the picture of Mona Lisa. Um, this time, instead of a float and instead of a zero to one, I use an integer. Okay, and you'll see why I use integer later. So, why do I use uh, RGBA? The reason is this if you look carefully here, I have a, uh, actually a byte array hidden within the RGBA struct. Okay, um, and this is why I use it because then I can compare with, with this. 
Okay, this is our byte array. Um, picks here holds the image pixels in RGBA. So you have R, G, B, A, four, four bytes per pixel. And then after that, you have RGBA, RGBA, RGBA. So you have 6,700 pixels. Basically, you have 6,400 times. So, so the, your byte array of 26,800, okay? Remember just now, our byte array was just 18, right? So now it's 26,800. This one, that's why I just said, uh, byte array of pixels. We create initial population for organisms. Again, very much the same, but instead of a randomly uh, generated uh, uh, byte array, um, basically I just randomly create a um, RGBA. Okay, and I use this function from Go, ram.read, basically it generates a, a random uh, byte array. And this is what you get, right? So it's totally randomized picture that looks nothing at all like Mona Lisa, right? So anyone you see Mona Lisa in here? No, right? If you do, you better check your eyes, okay? Okay, um, let's find the fitness of the organism. So what's the fitness between the image and Mona Lisa? Uh, we use an int here because the float is going to be uh, quite difficult. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say which um, fitness is lower. The lower the fitness is, the fitter the organism is, okay? And to find the difference, we use Pythagorean theorem, okay? Uh, Pythagorean theorem basically tries to find the, the uh, distance between two points, okay? So the distance D for these two points, um, A and B, which has x1, y1, and x2, y2, is basically the square root of x2 minus x1 plus uh, y2 minus y, y1. Okay, this is something you learned in primary school, secondary school? Can't, can't remember now. Yes, secondary, been, school. secondary school, okay. No. So how, how do we do that? So in um, Pythagorean term, it's two-dimensional, right? It's a 2D space. In 3D space, we just do Pythagorean term twice. And in 4D space, we do it three times, okay? So a, a RGBA, a pixel, has four values. So what space are we using for this space, right? So we do it three times. So the difference is this. Um, R2 minus R1 squared, G2 minus G2, da, 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 right? So you get the difference. But again, if you look at PICS, PICS basically is a uh, byte array of sequence of RGBA. So a shortcut way of doing this is basically getting all of these guys, add them up all together, I mean, uh, find the difference between one and the other, square it, and then add them all up together and do a square root, okay? So this is the, the easier way of doing things. Like, and uh, this is what I've done. Um, and this is the other reason why I use uh, uh, picks because it's uh, easier for me to generate the, uh, the difference. So, Again, going back to our, our algorithm, we select the organism with the best fitness and give them the highest chance, higher chance to reproduce. Okay? We still use the breeding pool, but there's a slight difference now. Um, because we have uh, uh, a lot of organisms, and uh, what we want to do is we want to use something called differentiated fitness by subtracting the top organism from the, the bottom. Otherwise, the numbers are too large, and it's, it's very difficult to, to uh, uh, come up with something that's sensible. So the difference between the best organism and the, the worst fit organism is 20, then uh, we place 20 organisms in the breeding pool. Okay? If there's no difference, then it's really difficult. So if we do this, then we just basically reset the population and then do it again. Okay? So as you can guess, this might take a bit longer. Uh, so this is the code. We create the breeding pool. And then, as before, we select the best uh, generation using natural selection. Okay, we do a crossover, we mutate, and we calculate fitness, and then that goes into the next uh, generation of population. Okay, um, again, the next generation must inherit the genes from the previous generation, which is no different from what I did previously, right? So I think. Ho-Chunk finds some mid-value and take from the left and take from the right and then 
mesh them together and that's the, the next generation. Okay? And then I also randomly mutate each generation. So this code actually do not change from previously. Let's run it. Okay. Um, so we have run the demo for a while now. So let's get back to this, to the demo. And let's see. Let's hope it works. Okay, let's see. Oh, shucks. Okay, let's go to the first one. So this is our original Mona Lisa. And uh, this is after 100 generations. This is how it looks like. And then uh, next 100 generation, and next gener generation, and so on and so forth. You can see here, the fitness starts off with a pretty large number, 17,000, right? Um, the number reduces over time. It drops, and the fitness drops, and you can see, you can see, after a while, slowly, something seems to appear, right? It's a ghost in the machine. It's Mona Lisa. Okay, so this is how it works. Let me just get back into the presentation and then I'll show you a little bit more towards the end. Okay, so um, Obviously, I ran this a number of times, so eventually you get something uh, towards the end. Uh, it never really actually gets to exactly Mona Lisa. Okay. Um, I think the algorithm can be improved, um, or it just maybe takes a really, really long time. Uh, so that's, that's what I got. I think after maybe 10, 15 minutes, I got tired, so I just uh, killed it. <laughs> right. um, let's see how, how that runs. Okay. So I use pixels, right? just dots here. Uh, what if I use something else? So I experimented. I experimented with uh, triangles. Okay. So started off with random triangles. Oh, again, drawing random triangles. Again, doing the same, very much the same thing. Like, if you squint, do you see Mona Lisa? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how about here? I use circles. No. So these are some of the experiments I've done uh, using genetic algorithms. And uh, just want to show you the, uh, the um, potential and possibilities with genetic algorithms. Uh, normally, genetic algorithms are not used to obviously create, recreate Mona Lisa. Right? Uh, it's more an optimization algorithm. Um, some people consider it part of AI. Uh, but everything is now part of AI anyway. Everybody just throws everything to AI. <laughs> But genetic algorithms have been around for a long time, uh, and it's pretty useful uh, for certain uh, use cases, uh, but not for all use cases. Well, one of the, the problems uh, why, or well, one of the issues with uh, genetic algorithms is it can be pretty slow, right? Because you are literally waiting for the algorithm to evolve itself to be something that's better. But once the fitness reaches a particular level, it can be pretty powerful. Okay. Uh, any questions? I wrote a blog post on, on this in the uh, first line, saoshong.github.io. Uh, the code, if you want to, to explore it yourself, is in github, saoshong slash ga. And uh, finally, uh, the CFP is open. Okay, please do contribute. I know a lot of you guys are not uh, good developers, uh, but those who are and didn't raise your hands, please consider to submit a proposal. Okay, thank you. Today, right? Once again, can we see our hands our first speaker, Sao Xiong? Thank you. Should I, should I answer a question? Oh, yes. Um, do we have any more? Yeah, you could uh, the next speaker picks up. Okay. Big questions. Right, so our second speaker is setting up. Um, are there any questions we have for Sao Xiong? Just raise your hands and we'll run around in the mic now. Actually, just know what you told us, sir. Um, is, is it considered rendering as well? Is, is a rendering application? No, so, uh, okay, I think I need to keep this. So, uh, I use a, I forgot to talk about this just now. Uh, I use a very interesting trick, and this only works on, uh, oh, what did I use? 
What's my terminal call already? Shit. Sorry. Yeah, we are. So this this is a. Um, uh, okay, uh, we are. Item, sorry. Uh, so I use this uh, terminal, alternate terminal uh, on a Mac. Like, uh, it's called item. Uh, basically, item is a replacement for your normal terminal in your normal console. Uh, instead of displaying, I mean, it can also, instead of displaying just text, it can also dis display images, right? So this is what I use. Uh, if you go into my GitHub repository, you just look at the code. There is actually uh, some code. It's just a very small line that shows you how to convert uh, this byte basically the uh, is a converted png file or jpeg file into uh, to be displayed on item uh, that's that's basically yeah. i've done a number of other things and if you want to explore you can just take a look at it <laughs>